All right, so I just want to jump into some Q&A because, I mean, who doesn't really like Q&A? And that's it. That's just the whole vibe today. We're just going over some questions. I'm going to give you some answers. And we're going to chill out and rock out and see where it takes us. So let's go. How do you deal with that parent of a bride or a groom who requests a million different picks? I don't. I just leave. I actually haven't ran into that, I don't think. Honestly, parents are really chill at the wedding. They may, like, say, make sure you get this or make sure you get that, like, maybe two, maybe three times, but it's not as, like, frequent or consistent to the point where it's annoying. Now, bridesmaids, y'all are a handful. Bridesmaids will, like... Oh, you know, my photographer at my wedding last year, he took it this way and it looked really nice. So maybe you should think about standing on top of the angle. You got to get the angle. Like, girl, stop, stop, stop. I got this. I'm a professional. I'm an expert. I'm a specialist. This is what I do. It's my career. It's my job. I don't go to your job and tell you how to do your job. Don't do that with me. I kind of like almost like semi firmly, like just kind of be like, Oh, okay, yeah, that sounds really good. Um, I'm going to talk to the bride. That's something that she wants to do. Then we could try to do that. But what we're going to do right now is this right here. Favorite wine. My favorite wine. So I like Cabernet. I like Cabernet. I like Merlot. I like red. Um, I used to really like sweet red, like dessert wines. Um, but then I started drinking it like it was water. And it's just, you know. All right, so for the next question, we have how will you know when you've reached fulfillment in life? It's a really good question. Um, it's all about what I could do for other people. It's all about people being inspired by my life and the choices and things that I've, uh, you know, done in life where people see me as kind of like a beacon of hope, of inspiration, um, you know, being inspired by my growth and, and then start to believe in themselves. If people like love my photos, love my work, all that stuff, that's cool. Like, I love it. Like, if you love what I do and you think I'm dope, if you say, like, oh, he the go, he the best, or, oh, man, he's one of my favorites, like, that's cool. I, that does mean a lot, and I'm not going to negate that at all. But at the end of the day, when, like, I, I could look around and know that I've inspired masses of people uh, to go out and live their dreams and, you know, walk in their purpose, uh, and they do it fearlessly, like that's that's it and people could say because of you i didn't give up thank you describe yourself in three words uh that's tough describe myself in three words um hmm dang that's kind of tough like dang just three words huh passionate i would say creative and maybe visionary yeah my final answer do you have any tips or advice for generating more inquiries and getting more work as a photographer or videographer uh i would say the the short answer is consistency always pushing out content pushing out content i use instagram as like my main um I guess the main platform that I use to to get my bookings and my inquiries. Uh, Instagram has just been very good to me over the last number of years, but it's only because I continue to work Instagram. I continue to put up stories. I continue to post content all the time. Um, I don't think it has to be every single day, uh, but I do think a certain level of consistency is needed. Maybe it's like three to five times a week. At least you're putting something out there, stories, uh, posts, you are commenting on other posts. All of that stuff matters. I don't, we don't know the algorithm like for sure, but the one thing that we do know is that you have to continue to post and use ha hashtags. So that's number one with Instagram. Number two, I think your website has to be optimized correctly. Uh, SEO, basically when someone goes on Google and they type in, you know, Chicago photographer, you will show up in those results. So you need to make sure that you've done all that you can to have a website that will allow for the SEO to be in place. But I think, like I said earlier, Instagram is probably like one of the best tools. You have to be consistent though. You can't just think it's some overnight microwave, fast food type success thing. Cause it's really not. And I tell people this all the time, like the success of your business is like a slow cooker. You have to know the ingredients and season it. And you have to, you know, put the right temperature on and then you have to be patient. Then you can eat. 
but you can't eat if you don't go through all of the work that's necessary for the meal to be good. So this ain't a microwave. You get you have to work. Coffee or tea? Um, actually, neither. I don't like coffee. I don't like the smell of coffee. Uh, tea is okay, but I would much rather drink lemonade. That's just me. Lemonade all day, twice on Sunday. If I had to choose between coffee or tea, give me sweet tea. So the next question I have is, is it the photographer or is it the equipment? Ooh, that's really controversial. Um, so, I mean, obviously you need the equipment to do the work and you need some skill level to actually be good at what you do. But I must say that I think... Um, definitely more photography skills like more of the photographer than the actual equipment that he or she uses i have seen and worked with people who've had expensive equipment and do not know how to use it so i would say probably like 60 40 60 percent photographer 40 percent the actual gear that you have that can make your you know images kind of be brought to the next level so more photographer than equipment how do you balance life, work, and your relationships? Uh, I don't. I'm actually drowning in it right now. I'm trying to balance it, but I can't. Next question. No, it's um, it's really difficult. Like, it is not easy at all. Now that I have an assistant, shout out to Smidja Sarah. Um, she is my executive assistant and pretty much takes control of a lot of the craziness that happens in my life but outside of that and even outside of just having her I think it's important for me to select um, you know different days that I kind of block off as I'm not doing anything I'm not working don't talk to me don't touch me it's like I'm I'm busy just doing me which is really hard because when you are running a business like if you are the business you know, and you, you are responsible for the ship. You want it to stay afloat. So you have to work and you have to do things to, you know, to grow and all this other stuff. So, you know, sometimes it's kind of hard to articulate that to people who don't have a full-time job. That's their business. What's a fun fact that people may not know about you? <sighs> you know, I have a couple things. I think a lot of people see like, oh, he's a photographer. So they see you as like this, like photography and like, like lenses and lights and flashes and stuff like that. But I'm really like a really fun person. Like I, if I'm not the life of the party, then do you really have a party? Another fun fact, I don't think people, a lot of people don't know. I was on MTV twice. So I was on, uh, what was that reality show? Uh, friend zone so i was on friend zone twice so that was pretty fun like, i love to write i love poetry um i haven't written anything in a long time but i have a ton of work uh, i have like almost a book worth of poetry would you consider yourself more of a creative or more of an artist yeah i'm sorry i can't even really answer that one that's tough you know for me i think i definitely think i'm both I don't know. That's a that's a really hard question. Like that one is is really difficult. I don't know. Because I definitely think that my photography skill makes me an artist. Like it makes me an artist, but some can argue that I'm a creative because I can DJ, I can video edit, I can, you know, come up with branding concepts and things of that nature. I can do website, I can do graphic design, I can make logos. Yeah, I'm pretty talented to be honest. I mean, uh, probably a little bit more creative than artists, I think. Maybe. Who is my go-to Mario Kart driver? I love Yoshi. Like, Yoshi all the way. I might pick Toad, but Yoshi is probably my go-to. What makes a bad photo? So I think this is a very difficult question. Because what makes a bad photo to me? may be different from what makes a bad photo to you. Some of y'all may look at my photos and be like, oh, I don't like how he did this one. And other people be like, oh, this is one of my favorites. I love how the lighting hits the side of somebody's neck. That is uh, very subjective. But I will say for me, what makes a bad photo is when people overdo on the edit or they underdo on the edit. It's like a really, it's a really tricky area that you have to kind of fall into for me to really love or like the photo. But I can say where you overdo the photo, where it just looks like, 
you know, people don't have any pores on their skin because you took off all the pores. So you can't really see any details on their skin. Don't make them look like they just got wrapped in saran wrap and, and then they took a picture. Don't do that. Continuous lighting versus flash at a reception. Um, I would probably have to say flash. I prefer the look of the flash a little bit more now. Early on when I was starting, I loved continuous light a lot more because I didn't know how to use flash correctly. So it made sense as to why I would like continuous light. But, excuse me, now uh, flash is the way to go. It's a certain amount of clarity that it provides, sharpness that it provides. Um, you just have to really learn to, to master flash. So yeah, um, hopefully we get a chance to do this again. Uh, until next time, I'll catch you all in the next video.